Hello everyone, welcome back to Celasta Crown of the Magister and the Palace of Ice. We are here in the heart of the mountain. We have one more lava duct to release. It says it's the south one, which I'm guessing is just going to be over in this void here. Apart from the magnesium, there's a crate behind here. I'd be interested to see what's in the crate as opposed to just the generic bits of magnesium and stone and other ores and precious gems that aren't really that precious to us anymore. Ash is good. Potion of giant strength frost and crafting components are fine. All right, now let's get cautious. I have no idea what else we might have to fight. Is that the hanging body of a skeleton right there? don't know i can see footprints let's follow the footprints and hope that we don't get ambushed by anything because boy we are low on spell slots now is it telling me that this is actually the lava pool we need because that's the exact dot on the map another Oh, wow. That one was way easier than the others. Maybe that was where we were supposed to start. I do kind of want to see what's in this little corner, though. Activate the heat generator. Where is that? That thing. Okay. That smells like it's going to be an imminent fight. Some super mega elemental or something is going to rock up and ruin our day. Over here, we've got generic stone deposits, garn powder, secret cave, clandestine heat generator. What? Hey, you shouldn't be here. What is this machine? Uh. They're hijacking the lava flow. We should find to keep the Perlevin Gardens in perfect haven. state. Don't tell anyone, please. We just obeyed Brodia's command. Well, that was unexpected. Choice, deactivate the heat generator. I mean... Second request, Hanging Gardens. In the lava tunnels, you have found a hidden heating system installed by the Perelevins, right under the noses of the other inhabitants of the Tavarian to ensure a heat supply to their garden. This deceit could cost them dearly. Disabling the heat generator would help to reduce inequalities. All right, we will reduce inequality. I don't know if these two are going to fight us for it, but, you know. The choice you have made will have implications later. And these two are unhappy about it. Okay, where do we begin? I'm going to do something I never do, and I'm going to cast Vampiric Touch for a spell here. And we'll keep that going for a little while. Bardic Inspiration for Evelyn. Evelyn, if you move over slightly, we can probably get some general inflict wounds in. Uh, let's all go against one guy to start. They are stunned. You love to see it. Maestro. We want a spot for Orkscar to stand. So for right this moment, we'll just go with Firebolt from 10 feet away. 21 fire damage is massive. And then Orkscar. I mean... Technically, from where we are, we can hit this guy. And again. Nice crit. No spell slots left for smites. No need to hold on to our reactions for counter spell.
and it seems that these guys do not pose too much of a threat to us. Vampiric touch here again. Let's go with just hammers, since this is going just fine. Let's try and stun this one. Fails, but good amount of damage. Uh, Maestro. We can finish this guy, then Orc Scar can move over. Close. They are still stunned though, so we'll let someone else finish them off. We'll do damage to the healthier one. Another crit. We'd love to see it. Big damage, no whammies. Disadvantage here. Good work. All right, Bella, Vampiric Touch right there. Let's give some to Orkska. Inspiration, that is. Evelyn, just hit them. Or roll a nat one, that's fine too. Keep on with our cantrips, thanks very much. Good hit. Another good hit. They're going to get one more turn in, but I don't expect they're going to achieve very much during it. Did I just turn that back on? I am also just wanted to move. Right, so... They can keep their armor and stuff on them. I don't need it. That apparently can just be interacted with ad infinitum. Then we're going to take a short rest, mostly to get back our cleric channel divinities for the stuns. Also, just go for a smidge of HP there. Now, let's get over to that main piece. This thing. Is it going to be stand on four buttons, do we think? Looks like it's going to be a stand on four buttons deal, doesn't it? Are we ready? Let's stick sacred weapon on what is going on Activate the thing. Find a way to activate the heating system. Oh, God. These need to be... Oh, hold on. Okay. It's a puzzle. Well, our sacred weapon might not last, but... No. Oh, God. Stop. These things have lines on them. You can see the lines on the ground there. Is that not it? Oh, don't do that! <laughs> I want all the lines to be as best over the other lines as I can. Sacred weapon is run its course, never mind. There we go.
now? Like a fire air combo elemental fight? Check the solidified lava walls. Was that? Where, where were the solidified lava walls? Oh, we got um, map markers to help us here. Sure thing, sure thing. Not the great big scary stalactite thing. Right, there was that one. Don't see any enemies around, so we'll march to here. It'd be interesting, like how we get the uh, the cold condition. If there was some kind of excessive heat condition at this stage, because I can't imagine how warm it is around all this lava. Right, you get to do the jumping because you are the most athletic. This tunnel leads nowhere. We need to find another way out. Oh, that's what we're doing, is it? I see. That looks good. That does not look excessively lavery right now. Could just be a brick wall, in which case I'm going to have other problems. This tunnel leads nowhere. We need to find another way out. All right, we'll go looking for another one then. Right, where are we going then? Just back in this general direction. That one? There's a oh there's a breeze. Must be this one. Yes, I hear you struggling to jump over the most basic of things. Your adventure is now. Deal with it. Come on. You got it. This is the exit we've been searching for. This is the exit we've been searching. Then take the exit, damn it. Starting to melt. Oh jeez. A few more hours to go. We are frozen. Box full of stuff. Potion of flying and some arrows. Is the potion of flying just in case like on the off chance that you have four fighters here and you cannot do a ranged attack to get over to this thing? That is a nat one. Technically, it did hit it, but it didn't actually hit it. Better. That looks like a trap or a problem. No path to destination. What a fantastic leap. Can we, like, make this make a dex save? We can. Interesting. I'm sure it's going to fail a dex save again. Does that then give us a path over because we can hop to the side to the side again? Yes. Elizabeth. We know Elizabeth. Elizabeth? Is that you? Damn. Can't say seeing you is good news or the opposite. What are you doing here? Getting my butt kicked, trying to get reinforcements. Reinforcements against what? Monsters. They're about to overrun Golden Tongue's caravan. Let's go crash the party. Follow me. What, no long rest first? I mean, in part, it is exactly what I asked for. More challenging back-to-back -back combats. Oh, we do get food, though. Not that I need it. I shouldn't be picking it up. Loot that container, huh? Maybe it has some kind of special magic ring in or something. Interesting. Um, can you get to this container? 
No. Let's just take that potion of flying then, because we probably have a bunch of them, and flying is not something we need to do all that prevalently. Fly over to whatever this little ring box is. Cash, cash, gems, antitoxin, potion of invisibility, jewel ring, crown, magnificent greatsword. Crafting ingredients, arrows. Magnificent greatsword is an interesting one, but I don't know that it's going to be something really a big deal for us. We need to break this thing again. But with the fly potion going, I'm not going to stop to identify that weapon right now. There's a lot of stalactites up above us. Survivors in the corner. They need our help. Oh, goody. And now I can barely see them. Peak terror. Um, are these things that would be succumbing to fireballs? Have we seen these things before? Apparently not. Okay then. Elizabeth has like no HP. Let's just go and make ourselves an annoyance to these guys. No idea how much HP they have, but you know, we'll see. What's our best option here? Looks like fourth level moonbeam. And keep that running for a while if we can. Uh, inspiration for Evelyn. We have a long sword, action surge, and not very much else. So, honestly, just stay out of the way for a while. They take some radiant damage, which is welcome. And that one, incredibly welcome. Really thinking about those attack animations, aren't you? do get hit on a 25. What do we have working for us? Not very much. I think that looks good though. Be vulnerable. They are vulnerable. That's good. That's going to help us out a lot here. We can cast 5th level fireball, fireballs with our remaining spell slots. Making sure not to hit Orc Sky if possible. 58 damage on the failed save. Love to see it. Orc Scar doing great work. Oh god, no! <laughs> Where did you. Oh, is that behind us? Jeez. That's a terrible time. Alright, Orkscar is up. This guy is about to die. Yes. Run while you can. This one is not doing great. This guy is not even helping in the fight, and I'm mad about it. How far can I move a moonbeam? Just 
put it there. Bardic inspiration. Oh, Jesus. Elizabeth. Oh, God, I hate it so much. Such a bad series of events. Is this one worse? I think so. Abominations versus terrors. Um, I think we are going to disengage. Just try and generally be out of the way a bit. Right, we have some fireballs left. We hit here with a fireball. We should kill the weaker one and really stick it to the healthy one. Good. 55 damage is decent. We are not concentrating on anything. So give me a ball of fire right there. Flaming sphere. Attack that. Well, double damage for eight is not a lot, is it? Just wail on this guy. Bend the knee or perish. Good. Now push back. Try and kite some of this attention. There's the terror and the abomination left. Bella. Send that over to where. Oh, we've lost concentration. Damn. Um, that's good. This is bad. Uh, Bardic inspiration there. Except we're immune to cold or something, so that was probably a waste. Right, let's get some licks in. Heal up so you don't die, please. Something. I'll take our action surge. Why not? Alright, three out of four is not bad. Maestro, if you find somewhere to stand, we should be able to get a fireball in. about there. Good. 70 damage there for a kill is massive. Now it's just the one remaining. Ah, oh, the long rest at the end of this is going to be so sweet. Did we? Yes, we did get our channel divinities back. Can we please stun this guy? We can. We'd love to see it. Next time. Right, we missed that attack with advantage. They are stunned. They are still stunned. You'll love to see it. Big hits. Moonbeam over a stunned creature is always a good time. Give Lisbeth some inspiration so they can actually attempt to be more useful. You have them now. Good, good. Don't walk over there. Thank you. Maestro, maestro, maestro. Honestly, we're going to take a step... Oh, we can't take a step back from here. We can fireball a disadvantage. I guess we could just fireball, couldn't we? Okay. That went all right. A timely arrival. 
We heard time was of the essence. Lisbeth made it, I gather. Yes, as it happens, we're old friends. In the name of my people, many thanks. Ah, pleasure. What happened to you? The Peak Terrors. They attacked just as we arrived. They caused an avalanche that washed away part of the bridge and many of our people. We tried to enter the city, but with the tunnel blocked, we had to take refuge here, and then the monsters found us. Well, you're safe now. Uncle Galar was right about your strength. But what are you doing here? We're just helping the clan. There's trouble in there. Ha! Ah, say it. Pearl of Inn and Etevin keep dithering. It's possible they value their house more than the clan, yes. Forgetting the clan's pledge to maintain a safe path through the mountains. Kiskainen must assure all citizens can freely flow in and out of Tervamalin. And with the election coming up? If just one elector cannot access the ballot boxes, the election is null. Anyway, maybe the electors would choose someone from another house. Massive insight check. Like House Golden Tongue, sure, why not? If I can ever pass through this damn tunnel... We repair the lava flow. Ah, so we need a good eight to ten hours for the ice to melt. Let's rest a while. Then you should find Kara and tell her what you learned. As regent, she must inform the electors so they can vote in full responsibility. All right, give me that sweet, sweet long rest then. Bot concentrating on Moonbeam so we don't accidentally have ourselves a mischief. At last, it stopped snowing. Get around that fire. Right. Um, nothing to attune to. No spells to swap. I think we're fine. Okay. Find Kara Wisehead in the city. Are we going back through the mountains? Is that the intent here? Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, this is where we came from. Okay. And this is now what's thawed out. Did we check this box yet? Basket, five ration pouches. Leave it, mate. Yes, I don't need no it. ration. This lava heat generator is really powerful. Yes, we shall leave the area. Thank you. Right. Quest over. A thing's about to get really political in here. Well, there's little going on around here. So I guess we're just going straight back up. Oh, where's that friend of ours? This general direction. There we go. Hello, Kara. My friends, I heard of your great deeds. Well, we did our best to make the election possible. The last missing electors are entering through the tunnel as we speak. As soon as the quorum is complete, I shall call upon them to vote and elect a new head for Clan Kiskainen. The candidates are Broadir Stillheart of House Perlevin, Voldy Boldhand of House Etivan, and Gilmar Goldentongue of House Goldentongue. Now, since you were witnesses during the recent unpleasantness, a nice way to put it, I would like to hear what you have to say about those who claim to lead our clan. Your people will vote, not us. It is my duty to inform the electors of the truth under Parkree's watch. Uh... Well, the guy was heating the place for a garden instead of, you know, the people's needs. Perlevin built a clandestine heat generator to preserve their garden, disregarding their duty to the clan. Outrageous. Etevin and the Sorax? 
Etivan has been infiltrated by Sorax, and yet didn't want to face the truth. They only believe in profit. Preposterous. I don't remember the tunnel maintenance failure specifically. But hey. Neither Perlevin nor Etivan took charge of the tunnel's maintenance, thus breaking the pledge of Keskanen and causing the death of many of Golden Tongue's soldiers in the caravan's attack. Damn right. We said all we had to say. Many thanks for your testimony. May the Owl watch over you. It is time for Keskine and Bartmaken to elect a chief, who will carry out the duty to name a speaker for the Pact of the Claw. Therefore, I respectfully ask our honorable friends, the heroes of the Rift, to leave us until the election is over. Just leave us scrying all behind, you know how it is. Return to White Rock City. All right, well, we are well rested, thank goodness. Let's see if we can get through some travel without incident. And then we'll have to figure out which is the next clan that needs our help. Yes, it's time for some overworld travel. Just a smidge, I think, from what we were doing last. Well, that's real far away. Where's the front? All the way over there as well. Jeez, we got some road walking ahead of us. Alright, swiftly into White Rock. Ah, oh, straight Master in there. Good cheer. Clear skies, my friends. We decided to compare our findings. It's been very useful. Good. On our side, we have three clan chiefs ready to vote. About that, you'll need the five of them, yes. But not only. Meaning what? There is a precise ritual to link the speaker to the Palace of Ice. Not just a vote, then. We're looking into it, but it seems that it requires a particular item. Let's hope we can find it in a shop. It has a name, so it's probably a unique artifact. I Goody. think it's the name of the speaker. No, it's not. It's the name of the item. I think I know my runes. This is Manic Hallen Code, not Dwarven runes. Oh, I should probably leave you a bit more time to study. The Guardian must gather the claws. It's a metaphor. Dragons don't do poetry. We're talking about actual claws. Let's go. As long as I don't have to find Santa. I think we have a new message from Beric Sunblaze. We should write him back. Give some information about what we discovered. Dear friends, our common friend Galar Golden Tongue informed me of the events in Turvamalin. Once again, you prevented the Sorakath from meddling in the internal politics of the Snow Alliance. The troops of the Principality earned a great victory on the front line recently when a company of Spellblades led by Lord Danatar himself unleashed havoc on a strategic location on the border. Some of the officers were saw a calf infiltrators. You won't be surprised to hear. Continue to the good work. I now guide you, Marshal Sunblaze. Okay. Where can we get to using the major gate? We need to go to the Elven Settlements and the Eastern Front. I'm assuming that this isn't going to get me to either of them. doesn't really help my expectations of map travel that way okay just get me to the exit All right if we're going to one or the other of these violet's house is not any closer so, settlements or war? Let's go to war, shall we? Seven days. Roaming beasts. 
Remoraz and Tiger Drakes. So we're just going to hide because we don't need the experience. We don't need the loot. With any luck, we can keep quiet along the way. We have infinite food because of Evelyn casting create food, so it's never a worry for us. Fish and frogs rain from the sky. There is no explanation for this. Unnerving. Another rest behind us. Three down. A white dragon. An air elemental and an ice elemental. Skip over that. Thanks very much. Right, that is create food four of seven on day five. Not finding any strange buildings or encampments along the way. All right. Come on now. The question is, how close to the front lines is this border really going to be? Is it going to be you step up and then you can see it just kind of like 90 feet away? Or are we going to have to trudge through some forests and back ends and all kinds of places to get to where the action actually is? Because it's basically saving Private Ryan, isn't it? Oh, jeez. All right, well... We'll leave that there, and then next time we will start off with this fight against two feral dragons and then see what we can do against uh, the quest that we are moving towards. But for now, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the series, please do consider subscribing or hitting that like button. If you have any questions, comments, recommendations, put them down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.